What's up guys, RBG here, hitting you with some DC gaming news. Warner Brothers came out swinging yesterday with their big DC fandom event, and we had our eyes peeled for what was in store for the latest game reveals. And boy did they leave a lasting impression. I asked you guys if you'd be interested in hearing what I had to say about them, which you promptly said yes. So we're going to talk about Gotham Knights and Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League today. Now before we get started on the video, I gotta give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, TubeBuddy. As a successful YouTube user, I often get questions asking what I use to get my videos tons of views. And the answer to that is TubeBuddy. This thing has helped me take my channel to the next level in ways I never imagined. It's a browser extension that helps new and experienced YouTubers grow fast and optimize their channels. I've been using this extension for years and it's constantly getting updated with new features, like the SEO tool that helps me come up with the perfect title, description, and tags to get more people to click on my videos. It even provides you with analytics besides your videos to see how much traffic your video is generating from various social media sites. The extension is absolutely free, but as a special offer, we're giving a 50% discount for channels that have less than a thousand subscribers that purchase the Pro Upgrade. All you have to do is enter in the code RISINGSTARBUDDY. So if you're interested in starting a YouTube channel or taking your content to the next level, download the extension now. You can do so by clicking on this link that will be provided in the description of this video. But yeah guys, the next generation of superhero games is shaping up to be a big one, especially in regards to the Arkhamverse Rocksteady has established, which we gotta talk about first. There seems to be a bit of confusion regarding both of these games' existence within their particular continuity. Gotham Knight seems to be continuing where we left off with Batman and Arkham Knight. After completing all 14 Most Wanted missions, we see Bruce Wayne initiate the Nightfall Protocol, which is basically a contingency plan devised by Bruce in the event that his identity as Batman was compromised. He explained that his existence was absolutely necessary to protect the likes of Tim Drake, Dick Grayson, and Barbara Gordon, so supposedly he killed himself in an explosion. And Gotham Knight seems to fall in line with the aftermath of that event. We hear news anchors reporting to have found Bruce's remains after the explosion. And we see the Bat family grieving as they get a message from him explaining that he's dead. So there definitely seems to be some form of continuity there. But there are a few glaring issues that points out that this may be a what if slash alternate timeline from the one we're accustomed to. For one, this version of Tim Drake seems to be drastically younger than the one we last saw in Arkham Knight, leading some to believe that it was Damian Wayne. But many, including myself, have pointed out that it is in fact Tim Drake. In one particular scene, we saw him wearing what looks to be his Red Robin costume, and we even get a reference to the Family That Matters DLC where we see him take out an enemy with a particular move. So yeah, that has to be the one and only Timothy Jackson Drake himself. He just seems to be a little more youthful compared to the more matured version in Arkham Knight. And his attire looks like it would fit that of Damian Wayne better. So yeah, that's just one example of how this game may exist in an alternate timeline or universe. Another example would be the fact that Barbara Gordon is no longer a paraplegic. In the original timeline, she was paralyzed from the waist down after Joker shot her through her spine. And with the exception of the Matter of Family DLC I mentioned earlier, she mainly served as the Oracle throughout the Batman Arkham series. And unless WB Montreal can explain how she somehow miraculously healed her legs, we gotta conclude that this game takes place in an alternate timeline. So yeah, this game seems to be a what if scenario regarding the Bat Family, which is a pretty cool idea. I think all of these characters will bring a lot to the table in terms of gameplay variety, and it's awesome that we're finally gonna get the chance to play around with the gear customizations for all of the characters, as opposed to only being able to customize Batman. According to the fact sheet provided by WB Games, each hero will have unique abilities, gear, weapons, and fully customizable suits, and I'm pretty sure each cosmetic will come with its own set of perks. So that's all fine and dandy. What fans seem to be indifferent about is the action RPG elements that will be replacing the usual combat that's made the Arkham game successful. And while I'm ready to see what WB Montreal does with this new approach, I too am a little indifferent about it. Judging by what was shown in the gameplay walkthrough, the combat doesn't look like it's going to be the smooth free flow combo oriented style we're so accustomed to. It's going to be more akin to what we've seen in games like Marvel's Avengers. You see the level numbers over the enemy's heads and you see the damage counter when you hit them. And this has a few fans including myself a little worried. Like I'm hyped about some of the aspects like the wall running and the traversal seems like it's going to be what we expect, but I'm hoping that things like critical takedowns and free flow combat will still be somewhat of a thing with this game. Like I can forgive Marvel's Avengers because it's starting off with those RPG elements, but the Arkham series has a well documented history with their traditional style and Rocksteady pretty much used it to revolutionize the way the combat should be implemented in any action game. And considering the fact that we've essentially gotten our hands on these characters before in the previous games, WB Montreal has a lot to live up to with their takes. But this version is lacking that tonality I crave. 
The moves are literally flashy, like you didn't even have to tell me this was an RPG. As soon as I saw Nightwing performing this tornado spinny attack with his batons, I instantly knew what we were in store for. It just screams action RPG. But I'm gonna be cautiously optimistic about it since this game is in its pre-alpha stage. Like other than that, it looks like what you'd expect with WB Montreal's pedigree of work. As much as Batman Arkham Origins gets flack for not being on the same caliber as Rocksteady's Arkham games, it did an exceptional job of telling an awesome story, and till this day the boss fight are my absolute favorite. I feel like they were granted more time with developing the game, it would have been way more polished than it was. But now they don't have to deal with a harsh deadline, they have plenty of time to listen to the community and implement those free flow combat elements the fans so desperately want in this upcoming game. I mean what they showed us doesn't necessarily look bad, and if I'm gonna be honest with you guys, the combat looks better than Marvel's Avengers in some ways. Same goes for the visual presentation, the designs look on par with what we've seen in the Arkham Knight, and the graphics look beautiful. If anything, I'm interested in playing the game solo and seeing where they go with this story. But moving along, we gotta address the continuity issue regarding Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. According to Rocksteady, this game is said to take place in the Arkhamverse, but some things seem to contradict that statement. The first thing being that of Deadshot's ethnicity. In every Arkham related media, he's been depicted as Caucasian. Even the Assault on Arkham film, he's a white guy. But this game's version seems more adjacent to the Will Smith's portrayal from the 2016 live action movie. And this game seems to borrow a lot from that particular movie. Like when you look at Harley Quinn, you can instantly tell that they're going with a more Margot Robbie influenced version. Which I find a little strange because I feel like Rocksteady has already created a better and more fleshed out Harley Quinn who's more faithful to the animated series version. But I guess since the movies have pretty much catapulted this character into mainstream popularity, they felt it necessary to inject more of Margot's version into her. And I gotta be honest, I'm not really a fan of Margot's portrayal or the new 52 Harley for that matter. I feel like writers have deviated so far from what she should be and made her more of a Deadpool clone. And that particular style has become oversaturated in mainstream media. But minor ranting aside, what I can say is that the motion capture looks great. Like even though I hate the direction they're going with Harley Quinn, I can't refute the fact that her movements do an excellent job of mimicking that of the movie version. I'd even go so far as to say it looks like they got Marco Robbie to come in and do the facial scans. Like the resemblance is uncanny. And I expect nothing less from Rocksteady. Despite the mixed reception Arkham Knight received, you can't lie, it was a technical marvel in terms of its presentation. For a game that was released 5 years ago, it looks better than some of the most recent titles that have come out, I'm just saying. And if I'm not mistaken, the footage that was shown in this trailer could have possibly been in game. Like don't quote me on this, but I do believe that's what the actual game will look like on the next gen hardware. Something that seems to be a universal comment is that this game has the comical, wacky, colorful aesthetic that the Sunset Overdrive game was known for. And I know this comment may come off as a contradiction since I complained that Gotham Knights was lacking that signature dark tone from the Arkham series. But this more vibrant style works for this particular group of characters. Not to mention that this isn't Gotham City, it's Metropolis, one of the largest and wealthiest cities in the DC Universe. It's like the polar opposite of its grittier brother Gotham City. So this wacky style is a welcomed addition to the Arkhamverse. We've already seen what Rocksteady can do with a dark atmosphere, but now it's time to see what they do with this more lighter one. But getting back on topic to the whole continuity debacle, we can go ahead and mark Deadshot's reverse vitiligo off the list. Now we have to talk about King Shark's presence in this particular storyline. Because if I'm not mistaken, he's supposed to be dead. If you remember in Assault on Arkham, he was killed by Amanda Waller after the Riddler attempted to deactivate the bomb in his neck. Everyone else in the Suicide Squad had their bomb deactivated after being shocked, but due to King Shark's thick skin, the plan failed, resulting in a funny death. So it's a bit surprising to see him alive and well in the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League game. But to be fair, some have pointed out that this person could possibly be the original King Shark's son. In the 11th issue of the Arkham Knight tie-in comic, it was revealed that his son had taken up the mantle to keep his name alive. But things still don't add up. He was nothing more than a teen human in that issue, and unless this story takes place many years after Arkham Knight and Shark Jr. jumped into some mutagen, then Rocksteady's gonna have to explain how this ties in with the pre-established lore. So yeah, I'm not sure if this game is taking those things into account. For all we know, this could be somewhat of a soft reboot that expects you to forget some of those smaller details like Deadshot being a white guy. I mean, I guess casual fans could see him being black with the name like Floyd and all, but hopefully the story does harp back on past instances. We need to know what Harley's been up to since the Big Nightfall Protocol. Apparently, she was locked up after Scarecrow's defeat, where she would be locked up with the rest of the Gotham's criminals. So maybe we'll see Amanda Waller recruit Harley and the rest of the crew to form this new Suicide Squad or Task Force X. The last time we saw the return of the group in this particular universe was in issue 8 of the Dark Knight tie-in comics, except instead of having King 
Shark is the muscle, we had Killer Croc. But besides what we got in this trailer, that's not much to go off of. Like, I don't think we've gotten any actual gameplay. But judging from the different action sequences, you can kind of tell what each character is going to bring to the table in terms of their mechanics. Deadshot's going to be the sharpshooter whose means of traversal will be his jetpack, and Harley will be one of those more nimble characters that zips from point A to point B using her grappling hook. Captain Boomerang seems like he's going to be one of the more unique looking characters since he now possesses boomerangs that give him the power to teleport. And King Shark looks like he's going to play as something similar to that of the Hulk from Marvel's Avengers except with a gun. The fans don't necessarily seem too high on this reveal or the gameplay Rocksteady is alluding to, and it looks like it could possibly be a looter shooter, which is a far cry from what we're accustomed to with the Arkham franchise, and you already know that style of gameplay carries a huge stigma behind it. But the game doesn't come out until 2022, and we got a long while to see what it has to offer. But with that, I'm going to turn it over to you guys. What do you think about all of this? Do you like the idea of Gotham Knight taking place in an alternate universe from the usual one? And are you happy with this sudden shift in the looter shooter brawler style for both games? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future videos. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help your boy out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on social media. Sharing really makes a difference. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.